Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habitifillah from some of the things that we should seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from as is mentioned in this hadith, a beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Shaykh Saleh Sidlan rahmatullahi alayhi wa rahmatin wasiyah he explained and so we'll try to bring some of the benefits that the Shaykh mentioned uh, and, and, and gain uh, benefit from this. And prior to this, we studied this um, supplication, this dua, and here we can gain some further insight from the Shaykh uh, about the explanation of this dua of the Prophet wasallam, which is seeking refuge uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from four things. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول اللهم إني أعوذ بك من قلب لا يخشى ومن دعاء لا يسمع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن علم لا ينفع أعوذ بك من هؤلاء الأربع in this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, أخرجه أبو داود والترمذي وإمام الترمذي قال حسن صحيح غريب من هذا الوجه من حديث عبد الله بن عامر In this hadith of Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه or narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه who said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say, you know, used to supplicate with this dua. Allahumini Audu Bika Min Kalbin La Yaksha. I O oh Allah, verily I seek refuge in you from a heart that uh, has no fear. Meaning fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Women du'a'in la yusma and from a supplication which is unanswered or not heard. Women nefsin la teshba, and from a soul which is not satisfied. Women elmin la yanfa, and from knowledge that has no benefit. A'udhubika min haulai al arba, and I seek refuge in you from those four things. In this hadith of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see that these four things are sought refuge from and sought refuge in a law from these four things. And the Shaykh mentions about these uh, some of some of the important aspects of this hadith. For example, when the Prophet وسلم, said, Nafsin La Tashba from a soul which is not uh, satisfied. He said, This is the soul which is not uh, satisfied with the rizq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for them. And they make it their utmost importance to strive to. Uh, collect wealth and they do that with the shidda to hars with severe uh, giving it severe attention you know spending all of their effort and their time to collect wealth that's their most important thing is involving in the stock market knowing what this is how to gain more money how to do this how to collect wealth that is their, their most important thing that they focus all their energy on and may Allah protect us and forgive us for any of those attributes we may possess. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. And then he mentioned what it means, Elm la yanfa, knowledge which does not gain benefit. He says, Ay, Elm la ya'mul bi, wa la yuhadhib al akhlaq, wa al aqwal, wa al a'mal, o la yahtaj ilay, o lam yurid fi ta'almihi. Ibn al-Shirk. Beautiful here because now that I've read the Ibarra again, I see the Shaykh gave an all-inclusive meaning 
with regards to this, uh, to the meaning of ilm la yanfa. And so what he says, rahmatullahi he says knowledge that uh, the person doesn't practice. So that's one type of ilm al In fact, he's talking about ilm al that it has several meanings. One of the meanings is knowledge that uh, that a person has attained that they don't practice. And so the scholars mention about some uh, in the past, I think Ibn al-Qayyum is, is also spoken about this extensively, uh, about the one, the ulama su, the scholars of evil, the evil scholars. And they are the ones who gain knowledge and they don't practice it. They do not practice what they call to. And this is a severe, a severe status or a severe state to be in. To not practice what you preach. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Wa'iyadhin billah min hadhi sifa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this wicked characteristics. Uh, characteristic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al Kareem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tul Saf, O you who believe, why do you say that which you do not do? And that this is major, this is grievous with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say that which you do not do. And currently I'm listening to some benefits from our Sheikh, Sheikh. Abdul Razak al Bedr, and he's explaining a classic book about the uh, importance of knowledge and practicing knowledge. Actually, it's by Ibn Rajab. He's explaining a book, uh, uh, one of the treatises of Ibn Rajab. And what he mentioned, he mentions in that treatise a lot of uh, statements about the wickedness and uh, of being one of those who calls to something but does not implement it. And we know from the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which refer to the, the one who commanded the good and forbade the evil. However, upon themselves they did not command good, they did not do good, nor did they prevent themselves from evil. And that they will be in Jahannam and those people, some of the people, some of the people from Ahl Jannah who benefited from their, their calling, their da'wah, will look to them and say, hey, you used to command us the good and forbid us from evil. You know, we benefited from you. But they didn't benefit themselves and they were in Jahannam. وَعِيَادًا بِاللَّهَ مِنْ ذَلَكَ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with عِلْمًا نَافِي رِزْكًا طَيْبُ وَعَمِلًا مُتَّقَبِلًا May Allah bless us with a class with the bad Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen May Allah bless us to practice uh, beneficial knowledge Ameen So the Shaykh also mentions another aspect of knowledge which has no benefit and he says this is the knowledge and this is where we have to be careful because unfortunately many of us as uh, Salafi youth, we didn't understand this because we didn't have the proper tarbiyah. So we busied the people with jarwa ta'adil, even though if you want to call it that, but we, we busied the people with refuting people and sometimes backbiting and sometimes namima, and it became widespread. Instead, and, and that shows the ilm la yanfa. For, so for some of those people who deeply got involved in those kind of uh, characteristics, they actually attain ilm la yanfa. That knowledge doesn't benefit them. In fact, that knowledge is a hujja uh, alayhim. It's an it's a, it's a evidence against them for the wicked sinfulness and the wickedness they spread and the bad image they gave to Islam, the Muslims, and Ahl Sunnah, and the Salafiyun. So they distorted Instead, all they did was distort instead of bringing rectification and maslaha. And this is the difference between the Alam Rabbani and the other one. The Alam Rabbani, he brings, he, he, he rectifies, rectifies communities. 
and he starts the people with that which is small and benefit the the beneficial small messiah until they get to the big messiah but the one who is other than this they busy the people with major messiah let's start oh you're a new muslim let's start you off with takfir you need to know all the duabit of takfir oh you're a new muslim let's tell you about the science of jarwa ta'deel because you really need this in order to come closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh you're a new muslim you need etc and on and on so this shows us that this can actually be especially when the people have don't have proper knowledge of these sciences that this can be because it didn't make the changes in the people as the Salaf used to say uh, practice uh, deeds are the uh, fruits of knowledge so the Sheikh said that the, the part of al la yanfa, you know, knowledge that has no benefit, is the knowledge which does not affect your manners. And it does not change your statements. You know, you still have the same foul mouth. Here's Talib al alm six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, and saying wicked things like this. Easy. Out in front of the people. We're not even talking about behind closed doors. We're talking about out, out, out in the public. Uh, what? Well, and, and backbiting and ghiba and namima and all kind of wicked sins, uh, sins on the tongue. Because they, because it's amla yanfa. And it should also rectify your amal. It should also change your deeds. You should be coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more knowledge you gain, that this is supposed to have a positive effect on your manners, on your statements, you know, your dhikr, your remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what you're saying, and good, uh, good statements. And... Your a'mal, your, your deeds. And then he says, another type of la yanfa, of knowledge that's not beneficial, is that which you don't have a, a need for this knowledge. And that the sharia uh, does not give permission to, to, to know and understand. For example, you don't need to have knowledge of, uh, of, of the various uh, types of pornography. You don't need to have knowledge of sihr, of, of witchcraft and fortune telling. You don't need to have knowledge of, of uh, horoscopes and things like this. This is an la yanfa. It won't benefit you. In fact, it will only cause you sin and harm and, and perhaps on the type of knowledge that it is, it, it can be kufr. So it shows us a habit of Allah to seek refuge in Allah from an la yanfa and that there's various types of knowledge which is not beneficial. And part of that is by not practicing the knowledge that you gain. The Sheikh mentions also, he, he also mentions, uh, of course, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we keep having the kareem, and this is to encourage us to make dua, to actually make supplication. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we keep having the kareem, ed'uni yastajib lakum. And this is, uh, 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 this is beautiful, glad tidings for the mu'mineen. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, supplicate to me and I will answer you. So when we think about all the times we ask people for different things, and we don't know if they're going to answer us, they might answer us, their answer could be correct, they may not, and especially when we're asking and making a talab, you're asking for a request, then we've given them this power. But just think if we at least first go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about all of our needs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we can have so you can rest with a, a, a trust with your heart. Supplicate to me and I will answer you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we can have a kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, and when my slaves ask you concerning me, then answer them. I am indeed near to them. Uh, I respond to the invocations of the supplicant, meaning the one who supplicates, when he calls on me. So let them obey me and believe in me so that they may be led aright, so that they may be so that they will be guided. So if you want guidance and you want your supplication answered, Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is a shart. 
there is a condition. And that condition is that it's with Tawheed, that it's only to Allah. You're supplicating, raising your hands to Allah, asking him and begging him. Not begging your, your boss. Not begging uh, brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so or this or that person. But you're begging with humility and khushu'. You know, with a with a with concentration and humility in the heart before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking him for your needs. And the Sheikh mentions these four things, he says. Aqal la yaksha. so he mentions those four things, which is the heart which has no fear. The du'a which is not answered, and the soul which is dissatisfied, and the knowledge that there is no benefit from. That all of these things the Prophet والسلام, sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from. And he mentions that heart, that al qalb al la yaksha. And so this is the heart that's, that has not attained, uh, that has no fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not talking about the heart that's fearful of the dunya, fearful of losing your, your job and your risk and your health and your wealth and your children and family and your spouse. But we're talking about the heart, the Prophet sallallahu sought refuge in the heart which was, that didn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that didn't have the humility and the fear of Allah you know, to have taqwa, that, that, that fearing uh, disobedience to Allah and fearing not doing the wajibat, those things which are obligations upon us. And then he mentioned the second thing, the dua alladhi la yastajablahu, the supplication which is unanswered. Because we need, you don't want to just supplicate and then Allah doesn't answer you. Of course, we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's answering. We, we put our, our hope and our fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to answer our supplication and our fear from his punishment and our hope and love for him and hope that he will answer and that he will accept our the good deeds that we do. And the third thing, a nafs alati la tashba, and then a soul which is dissatisfied, never satisfied with the risk and the provisions they are provided, and may Allah forgive us for this, because I know myself of the complaining that we do often uh, about the the risk or the job that we have. We would rather be doing this, we'd rather be doing this, but it's all by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be satisfied with what Allah has provided you while at the same time realizing your potential, going forward and looking for that which is better. But do not reject and complain about the favors that Allah has given you. And the fourth thing, and we talked about the knowledge which has no benefit. And then the Shaykh just mentioned very briefly, he mentioned, so what this hadith gives us as far as guidance uh, is that seeking uh, refuge from those four things uh, is a type of isti'adha, seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and of course that it's ibadah, and that it is seeking to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and seeking satisfaction with his decree, with the qadr. Uh, also the sheikh mentioned,